Hi, I'm Paul from Throw the Looking Glass Games. Today we're going to look at integrating two really good Flash Action Script frameworks. Flashpunk, which is a really good game engine, and Box2D, which gives you a physics engine for your games. Unfortunately, these two libraries don't automatically mix well. What I've put together is something called Box2FP, which is a library that bridges the gap between them. So, what we've got here is I've just created a new project called Box2FP Sample. Um, just to create a very simple sample world um, sample game which has Box2FP, Flashpunk, and this one is actually Box2D um, source paths included. So I've created a Box2FP sample.as which is your main class. So as with all Flashpunk engines, games you'll um, replace this with engine and we don't need that anymore. So now we've got a Box2D, now we've got a Flashpunk engine going on. Um, the way Box2FP works is it imbues a Box2D um, framework within a Flashpunk engine. So you're still using Flashpunk most of the time, but your entities in your world have Box2D properties. So the first thing we have to do is go super and put the construction in. Constructor in. I'm going to make this 640 by 480. Um, really importantly, you need to push in a frame rate and make it a fixed frame rate. So what there's actually a default um, that comes with box2fp, so box2d world dot default frame rate and true. This does need to be true in this case. Um, so then all I'm going to do is go is override the init function um, and we're going to put in a world there but first we've got to make it. So what we're going to do is make two classes um, one called my world, which is a box 2D world. And the other one is going to be called my entity. It's going to be box 2D entity. Cool. Let's look at the world first. So the box 2D world is essentially a normal flash punk world with the B2 world, which is a box 2D world inside it. Okay. So what we need to do here is first thing I'm going to set the gravity. So I'm going to make a new V2 vec, and that's going to be um, let's go 10 meters per second per second. So normal gravity, right? Um, then I'm going to override the begin function. The second thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to enable debug mode. So there's two separate debug modes available. The first one, this one, by setting do debug in your world, activates box2d debugging, um, which essentially shows all the box2d shapes in the world. The other type is enabling the um, Flashpunk console. So if we go into our engine and so fp.console.enable. So final step here is fp.world equals new my world. Cool. And then we're just going to play this and see what it does. And as you can see, we've just got a really simple world going on here. We've got the Flashpunk debugging. And we've got the box 2D debugging, which is that little crosshair there shows the zero zero point of the world, which is good. Um, important notes about Box2D worlds, so I'm just going to open up this thing here, um, is that you need, um, is that it's got a default frame rate, it has a default scale, so the scale of the world is 30 pixels per meter. You can change this by overriding scale like this. And we can just go return 25, for instance, and that'll change your scale. Cool. So the next thing that we really need to do is look at your entity. So there's a crap load of different arguments in the constructor here. We're actually just going to ignore a lot of them. So these can be really useful if you want to have variable frictions, all that sort of thing. Um, which I'm not even going to have those ones. So you're just going to take in a width and a height, and then I'm going to send to the super because all these have defaults. 
um, 30 pixels by 30 pixels as the width and the height. And then this is a really important step. You need to go B2 body dot B2 dynamic body. Okay, that's really important because it actually, it determines that your body can move. So in contrast, I'm gonna create another um, entity for my wall. And we're gonna make that a box 2D entity. And this is just gonna be a wall. So it's gonna have an X, a Y, a width and a height. And these are all, by the way, in pixels. So the next thing that you really need to do for entities is to go public function, oh, override. is override the build shapes function. Again, this has a crap load of different things. Let's just space this out a bit so it's a bit nicer. Um, so we've got all these different things. These are the same arguments that were brought in from the constructor. So the idea is you can use those or you could not if you want to. So for my entity, I'm actually just gonna make this a circle. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is use some of the helper function here, some functions here. So box 2D shape builder dot build circle. And we're gonna use the body, which has at this stage been created. So this gets called um, during the add function of um, my entity, or of box 2D entity. So the radius is going to be, now I want it to be um, the width of this op object divided by 2.0 because it's radius, but also divided by the, because this is a box 2D circle that we're building, so we need to divide it by the scale of the world. So um, we go box 2D world, um, and we can just go scale. And that'll give us a circle of that radius. So you've built the circle. That's all you need to do for that. And what we're gonna do is the same thing for the wall. And in this case, we're just gonna go build rectangle. So um, what we're gonna do now is body, which is the body, half width. So that's again, I'm just gonna copy this code. And then half height, which is again, just gonna be in this case, the height divided by two times box 2D world.scale. Okay, so that should give you an idea of what's going on there. So all I'm gonna do now is in the begin function, is I'm gonna add um, new my wall and I'm gonna add it at, um, oops, 0, 400, 600, uh, 640, and 80. So that's gonna be a wall at the bottom of the thing because our gravity is downwards and then I'm gonna add a new my entity and that's just going to be at 100, 100. So what should happen is side. So you can see it's pretty bouncy um, and that's going to be part of, that's just part of that object. It's got a fairly high restitution. Um, so what I could actually do about that is I can just go into the build circle method and I'm going to have 0 0.3, 1, 0.3. Bring that down a lot. And we've also got to change the one on the wall. So you can see that's suddenly much less bouncy, which is nice. Okay, so what we're gonna, now gonna do is we're gonna start, we're gonna add to the my entity uh, image, show how Box2FP deals with automatically updating the sprites. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is I've got an image here 
could sprite to PNG. I'm just gonna embed that, the code of which is like so. So that all aspects of an object can be updated at the same time, such as your scale, any of your scaling, any of your rotation of the object. It was really important to create a new type of graphic list, um, to graphics list. Um, so currently, Box2FP has this thing called a super graphics list, which is a graphic list, which essentially will scale any of its children that it can can scale, rotate, and resize and move any of its children that can with the graphic list as a whole. Um, all box 2D entities come with a super graphic list as its graphics. So what we can just do is graphic as super graphic list dot add new image so we've just added an image to image to the graphic and we could add sprites you can add whatever you want so we just play this now you see this now has this little o circle which is your image and it's being rendered and moving with the object so if we want to now do rotation, so the next thing I'm going to do is override um, and so I'm going to do the super dot added to make sure that all the shapes, the body is created properly, all that sort of stuff and I'm going to do um, body dot set angular velocity um, and I'm just going to give it an angular velocity of 2. Okay, so this isn't going to work. Well, it's not going to work gracefully because you see it's, the sprite isn't rotating around the same point as the image, as the, as everything else. So this was this can be fixed very easily. So I can just go ri image equals new image i dot center origin. Now the reason I, this, I don't do this automatically is that you will at times want to not have things centered if you have a number of images being attached to the same object. So this way you can choose how you want to do it. Um, so if we now just play this, we see that it's rotating correctly. Cool. And so yeah, that's pretty much Box2D. I mean, I can now do something like um, I could move this, just to have a bit of fun, um, to make this a little bit more exciting. So remember, you have to do super to update. Um, so math.random is greater than 0 0.95, so one in 20 time, 20 frames, something should create, come up. I'm going to add a new entity and I'm going to add it at map.random times 600 plus 20 to put in the middle and map.random times uh, 200. So it kind of comes up at the top. I'm then going to make it so the entity, um, sorry, body.set linear velocity and I'm going to give them a bit of x, x velocity. Um, and a bit of y. I will make it negative y so it starts going up and then has to come down. And why not make this random as well? Cool. And so now we can just press play. And we've got all these different things being created. And they'll all interact with each other, which you'll see soon. Yep. And so we've essentially put together a physics engine using Flashpunk and Box2D. That's it for this tutorial. I'm Paul from Throw the Looking Glass Games. We're a pretty new game development company. Please check out our website and let us know what you think of this tutorial or what else you'd like to see from us. Thanks for watching.